afternoon welcome to our Thursday live I hope that you are ready for some inspiration I'm Nadine Fossler Mama Choco and as I always say I'm just the instrument to inspire nothing that I say is set in stone but I'm here to give inspiration to give ideas and you take what you receive here and you create something absolutely fabulous this item that I'm going to paint today was a bar stool and um, previously varnished and um, the varnish was older than six months not in good condition I did send a before to Crystal we'll share the before afterwards as well so you can see what it looked like I have first important step on a varnish surface is to clean your varnish properly with lacquer thinners it's not just a wipe it's a wash off to make sure that you remove any greasiness oiliness furniture polish that might be on the surface um, and that's oil based choco is water based non-toxic eco-friendly but it needs a clean surface to adhere to so make sure that you do the cleaning process thoroughly and properly after you have washed off your surface and I always do it more than once um, make sure you use gloves work in a well ventilated space allow for your thinners to dry properly 40 minutes or longer depending on the weather and temperature and then the fun is going to start I'm going to work my first color that I will use will be matte black so there's my matte black my enzyme Hamilton's enzyme brush dry and clean I dip it in my matte black and I unfortunately had to prepare this piece in stages because paint takes time to dry so that you can see exactly how to complete each technique and stage of this revamping process and I paint onto my clean surface no sanding was required no primer but I did clean my surface properly with a lacquer thinners and I paint my first coat with matte black so I'm just going to do the areas that I haven't done yet to ensure that everything is prepared in stages very important is to always make sure that you work with a grain of the wood work evenly enjoy the process and this is the second step cleaning was the first step second step is painting with matte black one coat is more than enough because this is just a base for the next step that will follow I'm just going to complete this that everything looks neat sorry if I have left out areas it's just because I'm working at an angle and can't see everywhere Okay, step two complete now I'm going to continue to step three and this is the areas where I've already painted with matte black but these areas have dried now so these are the dry matte black areas and what I'm going to do onto those areas is I'm going to create texture because that is what today's workshop is all about a textured paint painted surface the product that I'm going to use is choco paint stencil of Paris and the uses for this product is vast please go like subscribe turn on your notifications to our YouTube channel so that you can see everything that I have done in the past with the stencil of Paris um, the channel is completely free just go just go follow us there so I'm putting some stencil of Paris in a paint tray this is more or less I would say maybe 40 milliliters I'm now going to add more or less 40 milliliters of the color silver moon so it's equal amounts more or less there aren't any rules because it's create, a creative session. 
Yeah, I could just keep the phone still, that's fine. I'll work closer. So I mix everything in well. This is a home DIY session. So no professional filming crew is involved here. I mix it through my paint color and remember you can also use paint colors that you like and that works well in your space. I'm now going to use a fiber brush, any paint brush. I dip my brush in my mixture and onto my already painted matte black surface that has dried, I'm going to brush the texture onto the surface. So it's not done evenly or perfectly. I want to see some areas where the matte black is still coming through. Yeah, I could just keep, keep it still. That's fine. You can just leave it on its feet. That's perfectly fine. And I just brush the stencil of Paris onto my matte black and this is step four. Once the stencil of Barris has dried I'm now going to show you the next step but let's allow for this to just dry for a while and then we'll continue with a bar stool. Okay so that's going to dry for a bit and then I'm going to show you now what I've done on the top of my bar stool in steps but on a different piece of wood. So I have wood here and the steps that I'm going to follow on this wood was the exact same steps that I have followed on the seat of that bar stool. So I'm using a choco paint stencil. Yeah, I could just keep it still, it's fine. You can just leave it on its feet on the tripod. Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to use this stencil on the piece of wood. And what I'm going to do with a paint scraper, I'm going to scrape some stencil of Paris out of my jar. Make sure you secure your stencil with masking tape. I did not remember my masking tape, but I'm going to secure my stencil with my free hand and I'm just going to scrape the paste onto the surface. Okay, halfway through, you take a break. It's winter and it is freezing cold, so then you wipe your nose, take a deep breath, and then you continue. So I evenly scrape just normal stencil of Barris, nothing mixed into it, onto my clean wooden surface. I'm going to do the application quite thick and the reason for that is I actually want to create something like a faux um, pressed ceiling board look. So do the application quite thick. So my application is done thickly and I remove my stencil and this beautiful texture on my board. I'm now going to allow for the stencil of Paris space to dry and depending on the temperature and the thickness of your application, especially in winter months, it can take long. I have on the other side of my board, I have done the stencil of Paris application already and the next step will be to paint with matte black 
on the dry stencil of Paris. And remember now, I'm busy recreating the seat so that you can see, that's fine, Yaku, don't, don't worry. You can see exactly how this was done. So on the dry stencil of Paris, I paint with matte black. and make sure that I reach all the crevices and grooves on my surface. When this step is complete and they are painted properly with a matte black, I allow for the matte black to dry. And on this board, I have already done that. So I've stenciled, the matte black is dry, and now I'm going to do the next step. As I've done on the legs of that bar stool, I'm now going to do the same on this, on this stenciled piece. I take my paint, my silver moon, mixed with my stencil of Paris paste, the step that we've done right in the beginning when, where I've mixed the paste and the paint together and I'm going to now paint this mixture onto my board. So it's texture on texture. And while this is still wet, I'm going to use a mutton cloth or an old piece, a kitchen towel. I'm going to make use of a kitchen towel today. I have dampened it so it's quite damp. I fold it like a ball in the palm of my hand. And what I'm going to do is very gently just wipe away some of the paste until I can see the black detail of my stencil coming through. Move my cloth to a cleaner section. And I wipe some more. Once again, turn my cloth to a cleaner section and I wipe. And wipe some more. So you actually just want to remove the paste on the top section of your creation. I'm just going to do this once more that it's visible for you on the screen. And you can always add some paste again if you at a later stage want to add some more. Maybe when this is dry you want to add more. And there I am quite happy. So it's texture, it looks like a printed, pressed ceiling board, but it's just a piece of wood. Now to return back to the bar stool. I'm going now to be creative on those legs that we've just applied the stencil of Paris paste onto and just allowed a minute to dry. I am going to, okay, there's the sections that we've done, the stencil of Paris paste. I am now going to ideally wait for it to just dry a bit longer. I'm now going to use a damp kitchen sponge. I'm going to use an artist brush and just apply some paint, choco paint in the color Gracious on the one side of my kitchen sponge. So I applied it evenly 
on the one half of my kitchen sponge and I'm now going to dab to create color on my wet stencil of Paris paste. And just here and there, I just want to tweak the color that it's not completely white. And I dab, gracious here and there. Next, on the other half of my kitchen sponge, I am going to apply some antique brown glaze. Oh, sorry, the camera work today is a bit shaky. So I mix my antique glaze well. I dry my brush just with my cloth. Dip my artist brush in the antique glaze. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with both my kitchen sponge and my artist brush. And in certain areas, just paint lightly some antique glaze on my surface. And dab, dab, dab with my sponge. And I can just use my dirty sponge and dab it on certain areas where I do want to create more contrast and wipe. A sponge is such a useful tool to use when you want to blend colors together. In the crevices and detail where you want to add more shadows, use the artist brush, paint in there. Use your kitchen sponge and dab away. Paint in the detail. And it's also nice if some of the black still shows through from the previous um, coat of paint that we've done right in the beginning with matte black. And dab with your kitchen sponge. And this beautifully blends the colors together. And in the same breath, it also gives the textured look on the surface. And you play around until you are content and happy with the outcome. And I'm just going to add some more there. Once you start to play, you actually don't want to stop. It's, it's a joyful journey. And remember, you can work with colors that work well in your space with your decor trends and the style that you're going for. Right at the end, once this has dried, and this is something that I have done over here, is I have just used my mixture of paint and stencil of Paris as I've done in the beginning. And I've just brushed over the legs with that mixture again, just to give some white coming back on the surface. And this is our tutorial for today. I am going to use this bar stool. I have so many things that I do want to use it for, and I'm just going to show you the final look and feel once you are done with it. So there's the legs, I hope you can see properly. And there's the top. And it's texture, it is contrast, it is beautiful. And was something I bought at a second hand store for less than 50 Rand. So there is absolutely no way that you, we can't make things around us beautiful. Because if things around us has a new lick of paint on it and it looks beautiful, it gives us a second chance on being happy. Happy to have beauty around us. Um, sometimes that beauty don't necessarily need to be things. It can be the hearts of the people that you are surrounded with. I wish you a beautiful week ahead. And I'll be back. I'm not sure if there will be a live next week because I'm hectically busy next week with very exciting things up our sleeves in the life of Choco. 
um, which I will share with you soon. But we will keep you posted on what will happen next week. And then be happy, be blessed and have a wonderful week till we meet again. Bye bye. Kom.